So my name is Elise Quevedo. I am an author, a keynote speaker, an advisor, and a digital media strategist for both individuals and companies. And I simply work a lot behind the scenes, making both individuals and companies shine on the cyberspace. I have a big interest in tech for good and uh, creating uh, emerging technologies and understanding how they can actually be implemented for a better future. Okay, so this is actually uh, quite interesting. Uh, it was very organic. I have a normal job, like many people have done, working at Gatwick Airport, believe it or not, for about 13 years. But I always had an interest in something else. I got into personal development, and then because of that, I wrote uh, my first book called Creating a Kick-Ass Attitude. But when I wrote it, nobody knew who I was. So then I discovered social media, and this was actually just before the boom of Twitter and the platforms taking a big step in 2012. So I went to many seminars, I learned everything there was to know about social, digital media, and little by little I became Twitter girl, Twitter queen, social media, digital ghost queen, and all these different names that people were giving me. And I had people coming to me to say, Elise, can you do for me what you've done for you? And at the time I didn't understand that I was actually growing my own personal brand, that I was getting more followers, that I was getting people to listening to everything that I had to say. So I went very organically from having a normal job, spending my spare hours into learning about social and digital, and then truly becoming an elite player learning always every single day more about what digital can do for you uh, and then eventually i started getting asked to do keynote speeches uh, i was asked by people around the world my first ever client flew me to dubai to do social media strategies uh, for him and next thing you know i'm traveling all over the world doing keynotes and advising companies so a very organic way into the digital world that it is today because when I was young, what I did today didn't exist. <laughs> the first thing is do not approach the brands yourself. Let the brands approach you. I see many people that call themselves influencers and I am the biggest YouTuber or Instagrammer, da 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 da. For business, that is not what they're after. Businesses, tech companies are after what we call micro influencers. It means that we may not have millions of followers or social media. We can have anything from 10 to 20,000 to a few hundred thousand combined across multiple platforms, but there are people that truly engage, that truly listen. You become an influencer or somebody of value. I don't really like the word influencer because I'm not a YouTuber or an Instagrammer, but I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of research, I attend many events, and then I write independently my views. And it's because of doing that, that then tech brands, for example, have approached me and say, hey Liz, we would love to collaborate with you. And I think it's when somebody else says you are an influencer, or in this case, a business global thought leader, that you truly know that you're making an impact into the business world. Today, before we start in my panel, um, I did a little exercise with the audience, something that I've never done before, and I asked everybody to close their eyes for a few seconds and then open them again. And the reason I did that is because when we close our eyes, we lose a sense of stability. We lose a sense of, oh my God, what is going on? Because trust, it is feeling safe with someone or with something. So trust needs to be built with human to human first, and then we create trust in technology. Think about how vulnerable you feel when you cannot see. This is what happens with technology and emerging trends like artificial intelligence or AR and VR. There are things that we can still not comprehend fully, especially if you're not on a tech background or if you don't come from this full technological kind of knowledge. So I say to people always, trust in the people first and then be open-minded. There is a saying that says it is not the most adaptable, sorry, not the most intelligent, nor the most the strongest that survives, 
but the most adaptable. We need to remember that technology is here to help us have a better future, not to take our jobs, not to make things different. Think about when the cars came into play. Think about planes that are only a few decades old. Anytime an emerging trend, anything new has happened, we have fear because it is unknown. But little by little, what we now think of fear in 20 years will be a day-to-day -day thing that we do without even thinking. So I started in personal development and uh, that is actually one of my big passions first. And what I did is I then fused personal development and positive attitude with technology because there is enough people out there that always focus on the negative. They always focus on the political sides. I don't have an interest on that. I like to tell people from a very positive way, tell the positive stories of every single brand and every single individual. Very soon, I'm actually gonna be co-writing a book with uh, somebody that was here today as well, which is Professor Emre Alkin from Turkey. So I do a lot of writings uh, at Medium or uh, on my personal pages. And the next books are actually coming out for 2020, both in technology and personal development world. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about education and it's something that I'm actually quite passionate about. All of us have knowledge about something and we were talking earlier on about fear, fear of technology. If we are not educated on what technology is, on what digital media can do for you, we're never gonna be comfortable with what we do. So I think one of the biggest ways of uh, inspiring the leaders of tomorrow is actually by educating them. So I think high tech companies uh, such as Huawei, Samsung, uh, SAP, they do have educational programs, they've got grants that they provide so that you can actually get immersed into what they do. There is a lot of younger people now that they believe being an influencer or a YouTuber is cool. I still believe that we need engineers that we need people on cybersecurity, that we need people that are coders. Guess what? Those are the people that are gonna create the technology of tomorrow. And if you don't have an education, that is not gonna happen. So being an engineer and being someone studying cybersecurity is as cool as being a YouTuber. So guys, keep on educating. Always do the right thing.